Okay, so uh, this week we're going to do some basic querying spatial operations and I'll just show you a couple more tips uh, to get more out of QGIS. And again, we are using the, the latest version 3.22. So uh, I have my basic data layers here sort of still load, loaded up the way we were doing last week. We have the, the base map that I provided, the survey grid squares, the structures from the field work in 2017 and then the road I digitized um, last time in my new structures lines uh, layer that we were creating before. So the first thing I want to do is just one additional tip that I probably should have mentioned last week but you might find particularly useful. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very specifically zoom in to that row that I was digitizing and you might notice that I didn't last time go all the way to the edge of my, my survey square and yet I hit save and I stopped editing. Um, if I wanted to go back and continue editing or adding to that feature it's actually pretty straightforward. So I'm going to make sure I have my new structures lines layer uh, selected. I'm going to turn editing back on and instead of clicking add feature, I'm going to go to that vertex tool that I did show you how you could move the vertices around. I'll click it and you'll notice, you know, you'll see all the red uh, points showing up where there's a vertice. If I go to the very end, the eagle-eyed among you will see this gray plus sign showing up in front of the last vertice. And now if I put my cursor over that, you can kind of see how it turned red. So I'll show you that again. It's gray, I put my cursor on it, it's red, and I click and now the little uh, very hard to see red dotted line is there indicating that I'm adding points. I can add more vertices as I go forward. And same deal, I'm using my left mouse button to click and add. And when I get to the end, I'll click and add the last one. And I've still got the red dots until I click the right mouse button. And now I have added, that is uh, uh, part of that same line feature. And uh, same deal over here, I can uh, connect these guys up pretty close like that. And later on, I could snap these two uh, together, which is something that we can attempt to do perhaps today as well. Uh, okay, so at this particular point, that tip is done. So I'm going to, I mean, that, that feature is now done. So I'm going to hit my save, layer edits, and I turn that off, and uh, I can also save my project if I like this zoom but I don't have to as long as I hit the save button you know my edits are gonna be fine so let's start with some basic querying so I showed you last time 2000 structures line if we go and look at the attribute table um, for that where did it go oh it was open in the background already so uh, there it is uh, you can see that we have all of these different kinds of uh, data that we entered in the field and they have these uh, names uh, you know for each column is basically for each attribute and then um, each feature has its own row and so if you go over to walls and you look and it says loose stone this is a code for a loose stone wall or stone just a stacked stone wall right uh, and you know you don't have to know all of these individual things, but eventually if you're working with a data set, you're going to need, if it's using a code like this, you're going to need a code book so that you know what the, the codes actually mean. In our case, uh, when we're doing our new digitizing, we're only doing type and condition. And the um, analogous field for type in the bigger database would be original U or original use. Uh, and also you can see current use and secondary use because some of these structures were used and reused multiple times but let's just say original use. So I showed you before how you can select uh, you know a per individual feature or by holding shift you can hold you know you can select a series of these and control you can do it you know without it having to be continuous in the table but uh, a more powerful way to do it would be uh, to use some sort of expression or SQL-like query. So I'm going to undo those uh, selections that I have here. I'm just going to zoom out so we can see most of the map. 
and I'm going to use, uh, uh, we've already used this, select by area, where you drew the box and selected them. We're going to go to the next one over that says, uh, it's, uh, by default says select by value, but if you click on the little arrow, you can see you can select by value or by expression. So the simplest one is to do the select features by value. And if you click that, it brings up this new dialog. And each one of these things is one of those columns in the table. And if you know the codes, you could type them in here. So if I go down and find my original use column, I can type well. I happen to know that well is one of the codes. And by default, it'll flip it to uh, the operator it thinks it should be, in this case contains. Um, but we might want to click equal to. And at this point, I can click down here. It says select features. And all of the things that are selected in yellow are features that we labeled as wells. Well, okay, that's great. But what if I want more than just the wells? Well, you have to do it kind of additively. Um, so, so there's cistern popping up like that. So that's another one of the things. And again, as you type into there, it should be pulling up the value of the code or whatever the field value is that's closest to what you're typing. And instead of hitting select features, because if I hit that, it will deselect whatever is currently selected and select whatever you've put in here. You can click the little arrow and click add to click current selection. And now we have the wells and the cisterns. And we can continue to do that. So if we want the aqueducts, we can do the same thing add to current selection. And so now you might be able to see we have the wells, the aqueducts, and the cisterns. So that's pretty cool. Um, and what we can do right now, we can close this and everything still remains selected. We can go to uh, edit, copy features, and then paste features as. We can create a brand new uh, vector layer, and we will give that a name. I'll show you how to do that in a minute. But a simple way to do it would be a temporary scratch layer. And uh, you can give it any name that you want. By default, it just says paste it. I'll just put Wells Aqueducts Systems. Let's just give it a fairly basic descriptive name. And you'll see in my layer manager, now Wells Aqueducts and Systems is a scratch layer. That's what this little icon over here means. And if I deselect any of the other ones, uh, that's actually colored it gray, which is not a great <laughs> color. So let me change it to a color that you can actually see uh, instead of this lovely shade of gray. We will do it uh, just so bright blue so it's easy to see and I will make it fairly thick. Okay, so there we go. We can see all the well aqueducts uh, cisterns um, and we've made a new layer but this is a scratch layer so if I close QGIS right now even if I save my project this data is going to go away. Um, if I wanted to save a scratch layer I can right click on it and I can go uh, where is it somewhere in here export and save features as and I can choose a name here uh, I can create uh, the same thing or call it the same thing wells aqueducts cisterns and I'm in my vectors here and uh, I can pick whatever format I want by default my system has picked spatial height which is perfectly fine by me I can click OK. And now you'll see I have two of them in here. This is still the scratch layer, and this is the actually saved layer that will show up here in my project home as well, um, right here. Right? So that's the file that it actually saved. So let's remove all of those and show you a slightly different way to select by a query. Um, that by value is, is useful if you want to do it like that kind of additively, but you can get a more powerful selection by using the expression uh, editor. And there's a lot more than just the um, attributes you can do by geometry and all kinds of stuff using these uh, tools that exist here in the middle. So over here is where you're going to write the expression in SQL 
and uh, over here some tips are going to show up and then you've also got your select features here so let's kind of duplicate what we just did but in, in one uh, selection so over here I'm going to find the fields and values set of tools and um, actually sorry not fields and values I always get a little bit uh, confused over here it is oh this is why I need to select the 2017 structures lines and then click on fields and uh, values let me do that now that I have this open and go back to my select features by expression uh, fields and values and now I have all of the uh, names of the columns uh, that are in the table attached with this one so again make sure you're selecting the, the file the, the layer that you want to be uh, doing the query on so one cool thing here is that I can click my original use and by double clicking it it'll add it into the expression function over here and um, I can click all unique over here and it'll load in all the unique codes in that particular field if this is a numerical column it'll it'll load in all the numbers and I'll show you that in a minute um, but here I have my expression I need to build it in SQL so I can click equals and then I can go over here and find what I want so well alright and so now if I hit select we can see that the wells are now selected and what I can also do so I can uh, go down to the operators now we have a few of them here you know commonly used ones but the operators have a few more things in here we can click and and then we can go back to fields and values and we could pick uh, original use and then we can click equals add our unique in here cistern and we can do the same thing we can put the and double click you can see where it shows up uh, where's my original use equals and I'll find my uh, aqueducts right here and we can hit select over here and it will select uh, all of them alright so uh, that's useful to sort of duplicate what we just did but let's say I wanted to find uh, the wells that I found as a surveyor that's kind of fun so uh, original use equals well and you know and you can also type in here if you know what you're doing and uh, surveyor we get all unique and um, we can put equals Isaac and we can hit select features and it says two matching features uh, over here where I did it just by myself but you can also see that Isaac worked with a bunch of other people and so sometimes it's not just unique so equals Isaac is only going to find the things I did by myself if I want to do uh, like a me and whoever else I was with, I could go through every single possible combination that shows up here. But as you can see, since I was one of the main people working, I'm in a lot of them, and that'd be a lot of combinations. So luckily, we don't have to do that. What we can do is instead of the equal sign, we can use some uh, a different operator. We can use the like operator, which is uh, going to find whatever I put here and if I use a special code and you can use this uh, you know explanation over here to help you remember uh, it can act like what we call a wild card uh, basically Isaac and whatever else comes after that in this in the in the sentence it will find it as long as it starts with Isaac in this case so it's really just putting this percent sign in here and so now when I hit select it found 17 features right like that um, which is kind of cool because now it's not just the well that I recorded by myself it's all the wells where I was particularly present 
while the um, while the this thing was being recorded, okay? And you could do that with anybody's name. Let's do Meredith, my, my main research partner. And uh, what we can do is just sort of delete my name here. And uh, we could just double click on one of these so we can get it into it. And what we can do is put a percent sign in front and after Meredith. And so that's basically Meredith is sandwiched in between anything that is before or after it. And when I do that, you can see I found 15 features where Meredith was present, whether her name is first or middle or second or anything like that in the particular database, okay? Um, and we can just continue to build expressions like this, adding different column names and different operators with um, ands and ors and all this kind of stuff until you have a very complex expression. And again, you can compile that with uh, database queries, but also you can do um, spatial queries as well. You can add from different map layers that are here. You can query multiple map layers together, and you can query them by spatial geometry as well, so that you can do some really powerful stuff in this expression editor. And uh, at this particular point, what you can do, let's say I'm happy with all of these vowels that Meredith was there, I can do the same deal. I can copy features and I can paste features. And instead of doing the temporary scratch layer like I showed you, I'll do this one where it says new vector layer. And here I can type in the name. Uh, you know, I can just make sure I'm in the right place, first of all. Um, hold on. I can uh, make sure I'm in SPV Valley vector. And I can type in, there it is wells and hit save there and now when I hit OK it's going to add that in and you can see it's no longer a scratch file it actually saved it in the vector folder of my project home over here Meredith Wells okay so um, that's a way to extract some features to create new files uh, and to um, uh, narrow in just on the things that you're interested in. I am going to go ahead and remove that from my layer manager here so that we can focus on a couple other things that we want to do now. Um, you'll notice that whenever I did this selection it shows up in yellow and that's great unless you wanted to use yellow as the color for your object like I have here for the survey squares. If you want you can go into settings, options, and you can go down somewhere in here. Um, I have to always search for it. Um, is it rendering? No. Tools. Okay, under Canvas and Legend, selection color, and you can pick any color that you want. Uh, same thing for the background. You could change it to any color that you want instead of white. Oh, maybe I want to do background. Uh, as black and maybe I want my selection color to be um, orange like that and then I can click OK and um, next time it refreshes that's what's going to happen um, when I do my, my selections okay okay so let's talk about spatial operations now and uh, the way we're going to do that is through the vector tool menu and uh, we have these geo processing tools and these are the um, vector overlay operations and you can see the names that like when we were mentioning in class during the last lecture things like difference intersection union symmetrical difference buffer clip etc now you can refer back to the lecture for the various spatial logic for how those things interact. But probably one of the more common ones that we want to do is to join two layers together. So a useful uh, operation for us is to join our newly digitized features to our old set of features. And this is super useful as you add new features during survey. You can, uh, of course, always digitize and draw them in 
on the layer you know that existed before but maybe you bring them in already as some sort of uh, GIS data like a GPS track file you want to add that to a master vector file of all the GPS tracks you've accumulated to that point what you're going to want to do is to do a union join and so what we'll do is we'll select the uh, one of the layers or both of the layers that we want to join and we'll go up to vector geoprocessing union and uh, basically we have the input layer and the overlay layer and that's the new structures lines it'll pick whatever you have selected in your layer manager by the way or you can click here and select the file um, in your file tree you know wherever you save it so you can pick any files you want in this case and uh, generally this is okay you can do a temporary scratch layer or you can save it to uh, a file directly which is what I'm going to do right now and uh, what I got to do is to go to my uh, GIS projects SPV survey and uh, joined lines like so and it's going to do it as a geo package if you do it that way in this particular tool we'll hit run and uh, that's done we have joined lines over here and again it's given it the lovely grayish color that's uh, not particularly easy to see so uh, let's crank it up at least in terms of its size and uh, let's give it a nicer color for us to see oh okay let's try that again and make sure I did it correctly vector geoprocessing union and 2017 is the input new structure lines let's just try doing it as a temporary layer and there we go that time it worked uh, must have been something about saving it to the geo package it didn't like uh, but now it's called union and uh, oh, well, pink is fine let's just make it bigger so we can see it there we go and again if I wanted to then save this scratch file right click export save features as so that's one spatial operation you know what we have right now uh, most of the other ones don't make a ton of sense in terms of like the intersection or the difference and that kind of stuff those are more often if you have at least some polygons it, it kind of makes a little bit more sense to do some of those things um, okay let's look at a couple other things we can do let's start with uh, the buffer now the CRS that we're in right now is an unprojected system it's a latitude longitude system so everything's in degrees and this is not a great projection system to be doing a lot of math in um, but as a rule of thumb, every degree is something like, uh, what is it, 1,111 kilometers at the equator. And so if you want to get it down to meters, you can just move the decimal point over. And so if we want it to be one meter, it's uh, point zero 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 one degree is about one meter, 1.11 meters again at the equator okay so one meter is not a very big buffer we talked about buffers in class so maybe we want uh, 10 meters so we'll remove a zero and we'll have 0 0.0001 degrees is about 11 meters okay and we'll pick uh, the layer that we want to do this with um, just our old 2017 structures and again, maybe we'll want to have performed a bunch of those queries. Maybe we're only interested in buffering the roads. So we'll want to do the query first and then buffer on the roads. We could definitely do that. Uh, and at this point, uh, it's going to save to a temporary layer, which is fine for me at this particular point. So we're going to hit run. And now you can see the buffers 
and if we uh, put the buffered one just below the structure's lines, you can see the center line and you can see how the buffered. And we can go in there and uh, we can, you know, bring it up so that it's a hundred meters and we can hit it run again. And now if we layer everything right, we can see one meter and a hundred meters. Well, maybe a hundred meters is too much. So we can go back in here and the zero back, but we can go to like 0.5 and hit run. And now we have um, 10 meters and like 50 meters. Okay, maybe that's useful for us like that. And again, because we're in uh, uh, degrees, a latitude longitude projection system, we're fudging it by using these degrees. If we were in a projected CRS like UTM, we'd just be putting the number of meters in directly here and it would do it much better. In fact, it gives us this little warning that says, distances in geographic degrees, consider reprojecting. We're not going to do reprojection right now. We're going to do that a little bit later in class, but just something to keep in the back of your mind. Okay, so let's do one last thing. Let me get rid of all of this stuff. Uh, remove. Okay. Remove the union. Let's say I wanted to um, select these houses, and right now we digitize them as lines, but we can see that they're actually closed, right? They actually are closed figures, and we might want to turn them all into polygons, okay? So what we will do is we'll do our uh, just regular select features um, uh, tool, and we'll click one, you can see it's turned it into yellow, so it's highlighted. Now, if I hold down the uh, control button, I can keep clicking features and it will add to the selection. If I don't hold down the control button, the next time I click, it's just going to forget what was selected before and it will select just the new feature. But if I hold down the control key, I can continue to click on them until I've selected all the houses in this particular property. So there we go. And what I can do is to go back up to our vector tools and go to the geometry tools and I can do lines to polygons. This is a vector type conversion. And you can see I can go polygons to lines. Uh, I could extract the vertices from the lines into points. So there's I can go back and forth. And uh, what I can do is uh, since I've selected from this layer 2017 structures lines, I can check the box that says selected features only. If I uh, do that, I hit run, and now I've created this polygon file of just these houses that I selected. Now, if I didn't do that and I hit run, it's going to try and change everything to a polygon, including these open lines. It's just going to close them off where they you know where they end and and that is not going to be particularly useful for um, you know for what I particularly wanted to do so let me remove that one again these are scratch layers if you want them to be saved you have to right click export save features as uh, another thing that I can do uh, in the same vein and this will be the last thing that I uh, show you how to do is uh, let's uh, zoom to our newly digitized um, little guy there. Where's our zoom to layer? There it is. Okay, so this is our road that I, we digitized new. Um, we can uh, go, let, let's say I digitize this in a very detailed way and uh, the geometry was super smooth, but I wanted it to be a little bit simpler. What I can do is to, uh, making sure this is selected, oops, go to Vector, Geometry, Simplify. And here what I can do is uh, essentially automatically remove extraneous vertices. And again, we're working in degrees, so we're going to want to pick a spatial scale that makes some sense. Uh, probably 10 meters, uh, we'll see, is probably good enough. That's going to be the threshold where it says if the points are closer than 10 meters, we're going to get, get rid of them, okay? Uh, so we'll hit run. And what we'll see is a, n a new uh, 
layer called simplified and uh, let me let me increase the size so we can actually see it and what we can see is the geometry is indeed simpler and that may be desirable or it may not be um, but in this particular case uh, especially if we were a little wobbly <laughs> in the way that we digitize this might be a useful tool just to get uh, the geometry simplified and again uh, because it's pruning basically every 10 meters this might be a way to kind of standardize all of our lines to about the same res spatial resolution of, of vertices Now we may want to do something like this it may not make sense for what we're doing but I just wanted to show you what's uh, possible so you can have a look through some of these other things there's a bunch of other fun uh, tools that you can uh, use to manipulate or create new rasters and uh, you know there's also some plugins you can add to do some uh, uh, vectors vectors is what I'm talking about at this point vector operations okay I think that'll do it for now uh, some of these things are going to become more important as we move on to other projects so you may need to have to come back to this particular video and even if we when we switch over to grass we're going to be doing some of these same kind of query stuff, and so some of this uh, theory behind how to do this kind of stuff will cross over from one program to the other.